Welcome to Before the Bat, the Gotham Podcast, the guy who speaks his awesome and all things Batman. I am Phil, and joining me is uh, the dynamic duo themselves, Tyler and Solo. Hey, say hi, Solomon. My little Robin, he's wearing his Robin onesie and green pants right now. <laughs> so, time to fight crime, son. Time to fight crime. Ah, uh, but with, 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 with Rebirth coming... Uh, I can now call him Superboy, and it works. No, that's right. But, alright, so let's get this out of the way real quick with this episode. What? I'm excited and nervous at the same time. Yeah, they, they threw a lot at us this episode. And I say that because I, you know me, I love the Court of Owls. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, I think, one of the coolest things that's happened to Batman in a while. And I'm just worried, like, maybe they won't do it justice. Like, they won't do them well. Uh, so, I'm nervous and excited at the same time. Well, they better give us a lot at the court in Season 3. Because, I mean, they bring them in now with, like, you know, there was th- there's this episode in the finale. And that's it. I kind of think that's where they're going. Yeah. It's like, that's the part of the villain of the third. And the cool thing about the court is you can't actually defeat the court. Well, yeah, that's gonna. Be, I think that's gonna be the big thing. Bruce is gonna discover Hugo. Maybe Hugo had Bruce's parents killed, but it was on orders from the court, so now it goes even up further. And it's like, how does he take out the whole court? You know. I want to hear the rhyme come into play. Yeah. The old story, like I really want the next season. I think the next gonna be awesome is if they brought back the actors who played Thomas and Martha and did and with Hugo and did some flashback work. Hmm. You know, we don't need no island, but you know, just kind of showing some of the things behind the scenes with with Hugo and with Thomas and with the court's involvement, kind of thicken that out a little bit. Mm-hmm. So. Oh yeah, and uh, but I mean, the, you got to mention versions of characters like um, we got the new Firefly. I know it was weird. I like the suit though. Her, her suit is awesome. Yeah, it is, it's. I like the whole design. It's pretty cool the way it looked, everything. And then, uh, we got our first look, I guess, at, uh, Clayface. Yeah, the Clayface I thought was cool but weird because, like, his face is, like, putty, but he has to have a machine to change it. Like, he can't do it on his own. Yeah, may, or maybe just for now, who knows? I mean, it, the thing about Clayface is this is Basil, and there's been how many different versions of Clayface? Uh, four or five, at least. So, yeah, so we have uh, we have room for change. But I did like the whole, like, Firefly being like, she's like I'm a goddess. And, I know, you know it's a, Selena saves herself. She's like, well, let me be your servant. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean it worked I'm just uh, I want to see Mad Hatter like now ever since they had the idea about using stories like I want to see what they do with Mad Hatter because that makes his character yeah. even more interesting with the whole Alice in Wonderland thing well there's only one episode left so I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe, maybe season 3 maybe and then they'll like close down Indian Hill okay I'm like, all right. So they gotta close down Indian Hill. Go figure. Gotta, the court wants it destroyed, so they can blow it up. So they're figuring out. And uh, how about a uh, good old uh, Eddie Nigma trying to team up with Hugo? Oh yeah, I mean, just. Uh, <laughs> I'm either gonna die or I guess I'll join up. Which which made sense. But I thought what was neat was just like, what if Bruce and, uh, cause you know how he's got Bruce and Alfred in that little like locked chamber and he's like, tell me, tell me, what if they figure out that that's like his weakness and they're like, and they play it off of him. Yeah. Or they're like, you know, like he can't hurt them or kill them until he finds out the information he wants because we all know how Riddler is obsessed with knowing the answer. Mm-hmm. So that would be kind of cool if they figure that out. 
but even another character, I mean, even earlier in the episode, Eddie uh, gets trapped with Cornelius Stark. I can't believe they brought Stark in. I mean, he hasn't been around since, like, I think last time I remember seeing him was in the middle of Nightfall. In well, 92. They need people. They're like, yeah. who else can we bring in? He eats, he eats hot. He eats hearts and like he has like he had like hypnotic powers. He can make himself he could hypnotize people into making them look like to, to appear as anyone. So speaking of powers our favorite filet of fish is back. Oh, your favorite. So what do you think about her transformation with coming back with her memories and her really lame line about I'm fish moony, bitch? Uh, I was like, really? I'm like, seriously? Like, they're trying to make her a major player. So it's like, yeah, she's the only one that can come back with her memories. I'm like, why? I'm like, do we really have to have her back? Seriously? Huh? Yeah. Uh, you, you, do you think she's gonna stick around, or are they gonna just like kill her off again next day, next episode? I don't know. I think it'd be cool if she just disappeared and reappeared later. Yeah. I like, no, you realize she's still around? Yeah, that's what they'll do. Like, she'll disappear, and then she'll show up sometime later on next season. So, I just, I was just like, really? Like, well, see, I got, I got excited when they were talking about the needing the reanimation process and all that. And because in the comics... You know, Freeze, Freeze's frozen technology helped uh, with the talons for the court. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where I feel like they're going. So I'm hoping that we're going to see a talon in the next season. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, well, then me and Hill, when they take, if they take Freeze, yeah, that that that'll be a smart way to play it. That's kind of what I feel like they were having Hugo Strange work on, because he wanted, you know, to bring people back from the dead, but with their memories. So, like, that would make sense for the talent needing their memories to be able to fight. But, uh, the, it, it was weird, because it was like, it was cool we got Bruce and uh, Jim and Lucius teaming up to, like, break into Arkham, but it was like, in the beginning of the episode, we got, like, Two seconds of poison ivy. Yeah, it's like she's still here. Don't forget, ivy still exists. Yeah, she's just like, what happened to your face? You're rich now again, and that's what that was about it. And no! Lucius, you know, can he be any slower marking things? No. Like, um, he draws a big arrow for Jim Gordon to see. Like, here, Jim. I did like he had the best line though. I might not be the first guy you pick for a fight, but I'll do what I can. Yeah. I'm like, all right, Lucian. That's, that's cool. He's quick He's quick on his feet. He's like, yeah, I'm just measuring air quality. I thought which was smart. I mean... But... I, this episode, I, like I said, I really like... I just... I'm iffy about, I'm nervous how they're going to do the Court of Owls. But then, like, the whole Fish Mooney with Powers thing, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, come on, really? But what do you think about with Basil turning into Jim Gordon? Oh, uh, I wonder, I wonder if it, it's just going to be next episode or if they're going to do something with the cliffhangers where he's still posing as Jim Gordon or something, like... Or may- maybe Lee comes back and she doesn't know it's really uh it's really Basil and that's like the cliffhanger or something. Oh, how cool would it be if like Basil went off with Barbara or went off with Lee? They thought they were with Jim Gordon, but really it wasn't. Well, that's what I said. They could have their own. They could have their own. Both have their own Jim Gordons now. Because like, what if Jim's with Lee and like Barbara decides to just take Basil because he looks like Jim? Crazy. But yeah, that could be a cliffhanger. I mean, the, the court or Hugo or somebody could have Jim locked up and uh, Basil could be running around as Jim for in, in the, at the end of the finale. It's definitely something unique, but it's one of those things like it could go for a while or it couldn't because 
Did you ever watch Fringe? Um, no. They did one where like they had a parallel universe and stuff, and like they had one of the people switch sides, and it was one of those like that's cool, but at the same time you're like I don't want to see a whole season or a whole long period of time of this alternate person impersonating the character that I actually really like. But uh, it's looking like this season's gonna end just like the last season. It's like uh, Bullock, Alfred, and Penguin like to the rescue. <laughs> yeah, acting Captain Bullock. Oh, that's so great! How long are you gonna keep the jaw of it? And he's like, uh, exactly as long as till someone else comes along and wants it. <laughs> so it makes me wonder if Jim's gonna step up or if Barnes is gonna come back. You know, what what are we gonna get? But of course, of course he, of course he. Bullock has like a line. Yeah, he's just like, uh, you know, it's like, are you sure it was Theo Gallivan? He's like, well, as seeing as how he's like, what do you call him, meat dust or something? Now he's like, it's a positive ID is kind of hard. <laughs> he was like, try to explain how Azrael was destroyed was great. The parties unknown blew him up. <laughs> it was like I said, I've really enjoyed this season, and I think part of it's because they've gone into more of the the criminal Batman mythos, and I like the idea that this Gotham, the cri- Batman's a result of the criminals, and not the other way around. Uh, and they, you know, this season has not had Fish Mooney, so I think that's really helped a lot, make this season better. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll get a lot of her next season. I'm hoping she just comes back and disappears, and they just kind of keep it as this open thread of like, Fish could be back at any time. But I know Hugo. I know Hugo was saying that maybe her dunk in the river would like contaminated her enough where that's how she kept her memories. But what if it? What if it was something that like Dollmaker did to her or Dollmaker? Oh, uh, you know, it's like he said. There's a lot of variables to why she has her memories, and it, any scientific explanation is going to take him time to figure it out. So, I guess that's where he's going to have to go. I hope they keep him around. And, like, the one thing I've noticed, like, I was thinking about this, like, with Gotham and some of the other shows is if you look at it, it has an one overarching story. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if you look at it, it's, like, mini episode, like, mini series in one season. Like, the first half of the season was all about Theo. And then he died. And then the second half of the season was all about Hugo Strange. So it's almost like two season stories in one season. And I think for some shows, that really works better to their advantage. Yeah. And I think Gotham doing it like this was smart because it actually worked well for them. Instead of trying to make Theo a whole season or Hugo a whole season, because then you stretch out stories and it gets monotonous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta yeah. agree with that. Yeah, but... uh. Yeah, that's another great bullet line when they're asking him who killed who killed uh, Gallivan, and he's like, "Which time?" Well, it's like I'm just you know answering questions and doing this until someone else does. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, you in the back. Yeah. But I love how Jim's just like he's going to go investigate. He's going to do whatever he wants, and Bullock's like, "I wish I had that you know option." I'm I'm curious to see where they'll take this for season three, mm-hmm. but I, I'm 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 excited actually to rewatch this entire season because I always feel like we should almost do a recap episode before we do the premiere of the next season because after seasons come out and you can watch them straight through mm-hmm. stuff that you catch stuff that you see more that I feel like you could really enjoy that if they had all those breaks, you'd really be focused on. Yeah. So. yeah. I, just, I, just, I just wonder how they're going to do the, uh, do the breaks next season. If they're going to, if we're going to get in like another big three month block of a break. Or... 
I don't know. But is that pretty much it for this episode, you think? Um, I think so. <laughs> what else has been going on in the world of Batman, Phil? Um, well, I know, who knows how much, hopefully they're not going to change Batman a lot, because I think Batman's the one that needs the least amount of work, but uh, DC, uh, the re- rebirth is coming in the comic books, Tyler. I know. I, I watched a little thing on DC All Access about rebirth like what to know for rebirth and uh it's interesting that we're getting rebirth but i feel like we got the rebirth batman like the last two issues of of batman so i'm curious to see what exactly that holds i think for me the most exciting part about rebirth is the superman story right now mm-hmm. so and that happens this week so i'm i'm pretty excited to see what we're going to get for rebirth well, after re- after rebirth hits, we're getting that uh, Super Sons bullshit. You know, our, our sons team up. Yeah, Every which I think is going to be an awesome series. Like that's going to be a very interesting. The first time that Robin is actually Bruce Wayne's son and Superboy is Superman's son. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I've heard a lot of people. That's the one I've heard uh, people are looking forward to more than anything, I think, is I've heard so many people say they're looking forward to that Super Sons. So, that's going to be... I, I don't know, I am. The more, like, I've come to like Damien and like the character and what it represents. Mm-hmm. And then, I've liked, like, I would, I'm going to do a... a uh, over on Krypton Report, we're going to do a retrospective of the Lois and Clark Superman books when the lo- after I read the last issue. Mm-hmm. And just discuss that whole... We're going to talk about Convergence 1 and 2 of Superman again, and then the Lois and Clark books. But, uh, what, what that character means. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, 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 the big question is, what are they going to change with Rebirth? You know, or what are, what are they going to get rid of in the new 52? Or what are they going to save? But uh, I'll ask you the same question I asked Lilith yesterday. How would you feel if, like, Rebirth opened up uh, next week and uh, Barry Allen, like, pops out of the Speed Force and we find out that everything that's happened in the last five years, the new 52, is just a, and uh, was very like, hallucinating and they, like, bring back the whole, like, old universe? It would be something crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how I'd feel. I feel like, you know, the thing with the New 52, at first it felt like it was, this is the DC continuity that we were getting. But, but now, now I, I look at the New 52 almost like they took a pause from DC continuity and we just went to another Earth for five years. Mm-hmm. And, and I've been exploring that Earth's continuity for five years. Well, the, whole, the whole thing that confused me about uh, confused. once convergence hit, the weird, the thing that always confused me was just like I thought, I always thought when you know when the new fifty two hit, these were the old characters. They would just been altered by you know Flashpoint or whatever. But with convergence, yeah, see, yeah, all all these characters are surviving in alternate universes. I'm like, okay. See that's that's how I felt. Like I feel like they that's what the new fifty two was supposed to be. Yeah. But then they're like, oh, this isn't quite working like we want. So they decided to do Convergence, which showed that, you know, it was an alternate timeline and all these things survived. And then they decided to go and do what they're doing now. So that's why I look at the New 52 instead of being the main prime Earth continuity just altered by Barry. I look at it more like just an alternate Earth that we've been hanging out on for five years watching its story unfold. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, I think Convergence was like a big litmus test. They put out all these different versions of the characters and they're like, okay, let's see what ver- which versions of which characters sells. And, yeah. I mean, I think, I, I believe that's the whole, that's the whole, that's the whole way we got this, we got the old Superman back. And I feel like that's the only one that really they were like, okay, people really want the old Superman back. <laughs> Because it's weird because if you go back and look at stuff with the New 52, they talk about this Superman's already done this, he's already done this, and he has all this past history, but then at the same time, he hasn't. So I don't know. Like I said, I just look at it like it's a Superman from an, instead of another Earth. 
Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's, yeah. it's only yeah. if it makes sense. And then plus we're getting a uh, yeah. we're, get, we're, get, we're getting a Trinity book instead of you know a Batman yeah. Superman book and a Superman Wonder Woman book. We're just getting all three in one book. Which it's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be neat and weird at the same time because if you think about it. Supposedly, the Rebirth Batman is a continuation of the New Fifty Two Batman. Mm. Supposedly, okay. We'll see. Wonder Woman, kind of the same vein, but this Superman is actually a new person. Yeah. So it's like that's going to be a very interesting dynamic for them. It's, like, it's going to be weird. Versus. Yeah, it. Yeah, it's weird. It's like he's a new, he's a different guy, but he's still Clark Kent. You know, and it's like. Because you have the whole Wonder Woman and Superman relationship, but that was a different Superman. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited. I mean, we're going to have to chat up Rebirth after it launches this oh, week. Yeah. It, it, I just wonder what's going down because I keep seeing all these things like online and stuff, like Twitter and everything, and like Jeff Johns and other things. I've seen at least two or three different people say, Oh, it's crazy! Yeah, you know, avoid the spoilers. There's this is gonna set the internet on fire and stuff. There's like yeah. one or two things in there. I saw one of the spoilers supposedly, but it's like I didn't look enough to see how it all plays out. Mm -hmm. I really just want to read the book. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I guess this is the last book that Jeff Johns is gonna write for a while. It's just the re the big rebirth book, and then after that, he's not gonna be writing any books for a while. Oh yeah, he's gonna be busy. <laughs> So, and I'm like, that's cool. Like, you know, I'm I'm excited about what you know he's gonna be doing with the movies. He's yeah. a very creative guy. So him and Affleck. Yeah, and then I'm not so sure. I don't I don't know a lot about the other guy that's involved, the more studio based guy. But hey, I'm I'm excited for the film. I just. My thing is, I want to see, like, we've been shooting for over a month for Justice League, and we've not seen any kind of images from the set other than, like, we know the cast is there. It's been, like, behind the scenes, them training and, like, their Instagrams and stuff like that of just them together. But we haven't had any kind of release of, like, a production shot or anything. And usually, I mean, when a movie like this goes into and starts filming, we'll start seeing pictures pop up. Well, yeah, but I think they, they want to be secretive. But uh, you know what we didn't talk about? What? Uh, the, they made the announcement that uh, we're, we're going to be getting like a Har Harley Quinn team-up movie or whatever. And I think that's awesome. Um, uh -huh. you know, for that announcement, Janine and I were talking, and we looked, We were watching some old animated stuff, and we watched the uh, Batman animated series episode, was it Girls Night Out? I we think so. Batgirl and Supergirl team up to take on uh, Harley, Poison Ivy, and Livewire. And I got thinking, like, it would be really awesome with, if not so much a Harley solo movie, but like Harley and like bring in Ivy. Yes. And then you can have the Birds of Prey and just have like more of a pa like girl power movie type thing. Like, use it to really launch a lot of the female heroes, like Batgirl, uh, Ivy, Harley. You know, these kind of characters that maybe won't appear, but it would be really awesome to see. I think it would be. I'm game. That's what I say about everything. Well, yeah. well like I keep like yeah. saying over and over, uh, I don't know, I guess they're banking it. I mean, in the movies, in the comics, everywhere, I think they're trying to make Harley their new Deadpool. I thought that was the Red Tool. Uh, but uh, you know, just no, just ad branding and marketing and all. Oh, yeah. They're trying. They're trying to make Harley like, like you said, because she started out as a villain, but she's become so popular. They don't want her to be straight villain. And that's always, I think, some of the problems is with the characters is we get really good characters, but then people like the villains. And then they try to make them so much not villains anymore because they don't want people celebrating the villains. 
Yeah, they want to like make him like an anti-hero and stuff. And, yeah. But I mean, it would be awesome to see like Batgirl, Black Canary, Huntress, Birds of Prey style. You know, Harley, Ivy, and whoever else they want to bring in. Do something like that would be really cool. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out who else they could bring in. <laughs> but that I can't I can't wait to see what they do with the solo Batman movie now. Like the Affleck solo Batman. Oh, I know, especially since they said they're supposed to do a lot of villains. Supposed to at least cameo or appear. And that like I said, makes me happy because just the whole idea of just kind of dropping Batman in with an already established universe and working backwards. We don't have to have origins for everything. Origins can be told in flashbacks. Origins can be skipped over. We can just enjoy the characters and finally see, you know, characters that we wanted to on film. I just think, yeah, with you Jeff Jones all- involved, it, it, it'll be good. Oh, yeah. Solomon Center handed me his Batman toy. He's like, I want to see a solo Batman film, Daddy. Maybe maybe you will, son. Maybe you will. But... <laughs> I bet Solomon's liking these uh, Batman Unlimited toys, like the big ones. Mm-hmm. But it kills me that their knees don't bend. Yeah. Like their arms bend, their their arms have all these articulation, and then yeah. their legs are just straight. <laughs> I'm like, really? Toys? Come on. They don't have to walk or run. <laughs> yeah, they don't have to kick. They just. All right, buddy. I hear you. But mm-hmm. anything else we got to go over? Uh, I don't know. Is there any more Batman? Any more Batman news? I don't think. Rebirth. We went over. We talked about Gotham. We talked about uh, what's going on with the movie universe. We haven't had any more. Like I said, I'm wondering, if, are we going to get a new bat suit for Justice League? Like a new tweak? Because we always get new tweaks on suits for every movie. Yeah. So, yeah, probably. Because I think it's like always like a learning process with them. Some marketing. It's a way to sell toys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, all right, man. It is. All right. So, all right, everyone. Next week's. All right. That's right. Season finale. But uh, if you if you want to share any thoughts of anything Batman related, including Gotham, uh, you can email us before the bad at gmail.com. Facebook is before the bad, the Gotham podcast. Uh, Twitter is at Before the Bad Pod, where you can uh, join me. I'll be live tweeting the season finale, and our shared Instagram is Before the Bat underscore Flash Arrow Pod. And Tyler, where can the world find you? They can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Gmail at JTY Patrick, as well as uh, Krypton Report. I'm over there talking Supergirl and Superman, and you can find me there and chat me up some DC. And, of course, you can always talk to me, anything DC or Marvel, at uh, NightwingPDP at gmail.com. And on Twitter, I'm at NightwingPDP. So, please, please, please follow me. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> All right. Is that it, then? That's it. All right. Well, like I said, uh, join me for the live tweet of the finale and then come back here and uh, we'll talk about the finale. But until then... Same bat time, same bat channel. Same bat time, same bat channel. Gotham Podcast. Get your grilled cheese ready.